to our casters. Thank you very much, Excalibur. Welcome, everybody, to the cast of SK. I'm Quickshot, joined by Ender, as we're jumping into SK, taking on Misfits. Every team in Europe has five games remaining before playoffs begins. And the pressure is as high as it's ever going to be for both of these squads. Yeah, I mean, time is running out with only five games remaining. The wins must come now, especially for a team like SK yes. on an eight-game losing streak. This is their last chance, really, to turn absolutely, things around. Absolutely the case. And as you said already, for SK Gaming, even if they win out, they will have eight wins and they need teams around them to lose. As we dive into the draft, the first thing I want to talk about, and uh, is what you'd like to see. And I'm always focus on Misfits first. Yesterday, Dan Dan ran the Karma. It was a supportive pick, one that you play around the team. We've not seen this Misfit squad show success with that style of gameplay. I like Dan Dan on a split pusher. I like Dan Dan on a champion that draws threats. Absolutely. Misfits have no need to try and reinvent the wheel. Now that they are on red side, it makes a whole lot more sense for them to ban away the likes of the Karma. Maybe set up for a little counter pick action for Dan Dan in the top lane. Put him on a strong split pusher and play that true Misfit style. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, obviously, with SK game being blue side out the gates. They have removed the Akali, the Gragas, the response Karma and Zaya. So Irelia still open and available, but I'm not scared of leaders, Irelia. He has lost with it twice dramatically. Now, that being said, Gen X should be scared of leaders, Irelia, because in the EU Masters Finals, leader played it three out of three games. Those were three instant wins, and Misfits took home the prize. So SK going to be banning that out last. Now, of course, you mentioned Gen X with Sacre, Dandan, Dan, and leader. These are four guys that you actually cast it firsthand at EU Masters. Based on what we've seen of the teams in the last couple of weeks, I mean, are we leaning towards the Misfits squad being a little bit more favored in these, you know, solo lanes? I mean, if we looked at these two solo lanes from EU Masters, you would give Leader the advantage in the mid lane. I think that's an obvious one. He had such a good tournament. But actually, Sakurai was the better performer over Dan Dan in those matches. Now, when they faced up head to head, Sakurai wasn't able to generate a huge lead up in the top lane. But throughout that tournament, he was considered one of, if not the best player in that tournament. Okay, so let's see if he can pull off the, the impressive play today because Sakre started the summer split relatively well. He, he made a bit of a splash, got SK a couple of wins, but then he's been invisible. You know, we haven't seen that level of impact. Now, I don't want to single out Sakre. This is a team. This team is zero and eight. They're losing streak right now. Self-made similarly, not having the same level of impact that truthfully we had come to expect. And, well, truthfully, the same is true for the whole squad. You know, every every single one of them needs to step up, and it's Yumi that's locked in first. Yep, I love the Yumi here sleep, uh, sneaking through here on the side of SK Gaming. Good support for Dreams here, and especially if you are a crown shot, just put all the eggs in his basket here. He has been the one player that I think has performed consistently well down in this bottom lane for the side of SK Gaming. But Misfits might just want to attack them inside the laning phase. Sejuani out of the jungle and Lucian bot lane for Neon. This is definitely something that could be set up for a power lane to try and punish the Yumi Ezreal. Okay, so let's see what support they're going to end up locking in. As you mentioned, the Ezreal secured for Crown Shot, one of his sort of signature champions, something he's played a whole lot of. And when I look at his Ezreal, six games played his most here in the summer split. Aatrox will be secured for SK Gaming. And then just now rotating. This Aatrox obviously can go both top and mid. Yeah, I'm expecting it to be in the mid lane here for Gen X. He did play that in yesterday's match, but also Sakurai, much more of a ranged top lane player, uh, looks to bully out his lane opponents. And also in the pregame chat, there was some banter between, between Gen X and Leader. They were both hoping for some more aggressive mid lane picks, not the Azirs and the Corkies of the world. But I mentioned kill lane, bottom lane, the silence from Fiddlesticks, the instant fear. If there was ever an ability to punish an Ezreal lane, this has got to be it. Now, Fiddlesticks showed up yesterday, Fiddlesticks showed up today. We are playing on patch 914. This is not what you guys are playing at home on live. Is this just like a scrim thing? Do you like the fiddle and how it's being utilized? I personally do like it. It's a very niche pick, I would say, but the ability the ability to have instant crowd control, instant hard CC with the fear, then you change that into a silence. It signals to me that Misfits want to play through this bottom lane, that it's not going to be the Dan Dan show necessarily for the squad, but much more faith in Neon and Eva. Now, do you think this squad can pull that off? Because, you know, we touched on just before draft, the flavor of a Misfits win has been predominantly through Dandan Dan and Lida and side lanes, right? 
This is so far in the draft a pivot in that direction, but we don't have either solo lane locked in, so there is options for counter picks here. There's options for them to have counter picks, but ultimately with that type of lane, if Misfits were to pivot and try to play around Dan Dan, I think that would be a huge mistake. Now, got I gotta be honest, I am very skeptical of this draft so far based on what we have seen Misfits be successful with in the past. Now, they could be trying to change things up. We saw yesterday's game was a very different style for them, but it did not work, so this has to be a much better one, or they could just be shooting themselves in the foot, losing to our last place team. While looking at the Gangplank lock-in with the Cannon Barrage and a potential gank down in the bottom lane, this is all in, in that style of play. And just to set some expectations early, we need to see how well Misfits can play this style. We've not yet really seen it, so this will be impressive if they can take down a struggling squad and show some growth on the Misfits side. It definitely can be, and this Misfits comp, Ooh. don't get mistaken, it's all about setting up dives in the bottling, but self-made now, going on to the Evel, and this is not what I expected at all, but he might just be thinking the Sejuani not gonna have a huge early game impact. If he can get to level six and then find counter ganks, especially around his bottom lane, there is some room to fight back there. What I love about this Sejuani and Evelyn locked in, uh, Endo, you're a huge fan of jungle pathing early, so I want to really keep a close eye once we get into game and what sort of impact uh, Selfmade is going to have on this champion, where he spends his time, um, how Misfits respond playing the vision game, etc. Now we need to see where this option for leader lies. Does he, what does he want to run into what is technically a double flex? Do you, I think you he's pretty sure Sakurai he's playing against the Aatrox the rise, right yeah. now. It's, it's probably the, the rise in the top lane for Sakurai. As long as we're talking about picks from that EU Masters Finals, he did Whoa. two games of the rise. But here is Leader Zed. This is a champion that he was willing to blind pick first rotation in EU Masters multiple times. It was consistently banned out against him. There's not a better chance to pull it out on the big stage than up here against SK. Unbelievable. Okay, now this will obviously give some kill threat onto those very squishy targets. Ezreal, Yumi, Ezreal. Evelyn and Leader had the number of Gen X during the course of EU Masters. Can he replicate that? Can Misfits continue the one and one trend that they have started since you know, uh, debuting this premier squad in its roster. Honestly, looking at this comp, I was skeptical at first. Now I'm seeing leader on this Zed, and if they can put the resources into bottom lane that they need, they have so many good tools to set up dives on the bottom lane to get leader pressure from this middle lane. There's definitely the tools, and the ball is in Misfits' court. They are the team that should be acting first and trying to snowball ahead in the early game. Okay, we'll have to keep a very close eye then on decision-making, early game pathing, whether or not they can execute with excellence in terms of their gameplay. For Misfits and SK, it is a battle to get into playoffs. Wins here are crucially, crucially important as we start the very last day of week number seven. Now, you mentioned Misfits want to start first. For SK, a little bit of scaling, buy some time. Where are we looking for self-made to prioritize? I feel like we just have to wait for self-made to hit level six. A lot of the times when you're on the Evelyn, it's more about dodging the enemy jungler in the early game. And then once you hit level six, it's all about finding counter ganks, knowing when and where Kira is going to be on the map. That is going to be the job of self-made in this game. Okay, well, let's take a look if they can do it. We're loading up onto the Rift. And as a reminder for SK Gaming, the eight game losing streak has been a difficult one. Kirei, the man on your screen right now, will be trying to make that the ninth loss in a row for SK Gaming. And of course, SK were one of the surprises of spring. They snuck themselves into playoffs. They surprised a few people with explosive performances, but have not really been able to replicate that success. Now we'll be taking a look at whether or not they can start to turn the ship around. For SK Gaming, they need a lot of teams around them to lose games. And ideally, SK need to be looking to win out. We will, of course, be jumping onto the Rift in just a moment. And I'm gonna turn to Ender once more. We've obviously discussed a fair bit about the uh, uh, nuances of each composition, but now give me some details and specifics when and how and where do you want to see Kirei getting his team ahead? Honestly, I'm, from what I'm seeing off of this level one, I think Kirei should be looking for bot lane pressure early on in the game. Again, we expect to see Heva and Neon pushing down bottom lane. If they can get a flash early, that's going to be great. But ultimately, once level six comes around, we're going to expect a four-man rotation into this bottom lane for Misfits to try and shut down Crown Shot. Ooh, I love that. Party's in the bottom lane. You know, just having a small graphical-related error, which 
looks to be resolved. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sticking with us. We're now in game. Nothing has been missed thus far. And we can already see Genix and Leader going toe to toe. Yeah, so what I wanted to bring up right off the bat is some of Kiva's decision making at level one. You'll notice this ward that's placed inside the lane here. Kiva came straight out of base, put that down, then recalled and switched over to a sweeper. That says to me that Kira is going to be looking early around this bottom lane. They want to try and clear away some vision, either to set up for some sort of lane gank or some kind of move here from Kira, who's going to be starting on the top side of the map and coming down. Okay, and um, I want to take a look then at the vision, how, how that's actually going to... Whether they can pull it off, right? Because it's a little bit of early game shenanigans. We don't see too many Evelyns when uh, they, they here in the LEC. So what is Evelyn versus Sejuani? Not only in the matchup, but in the context of... SK and Selfmade are going to know that bot lane is the focus here. Yeah, Selfmade, his pathing is going to be relatively slow, but I do think the order of his camps was particularly interesting in this game. He started off on his Raptors and then went to his Krugs. Usually you go red buff first and then into the Krugs, but the reason he's doing this is to try and get an earlier respawn off of the Krug and Raptor camp. That's because he's trying to get to level 6 very, very soon. And the second spawn of the red buff, the timer on that is not going to be as important as it's going to be for him to make sure his Krugs are going to be respawning around the 430 mark in this game. Because that camp gives so much bonus experience, uh, he's going to be looking to full clear around his top side jungle, reset, then go back down bottom side and get those multi-target camps fast. Now the question is, does that uh, jungle camp focus? Is there a big risk that if Crown Shot and Dreams don't play defensively or safely enough that they could be punished if he's going to be spending time farming? I mean, there's definitely time to punish. Right now, Misfits, we talked about that sweeper pickup early on. Yep. Leader and Kire both. Level 3, not even level 6, they're already here. Oh my word, Kire is going to be jumping here onto Dreams. Dreams finds Crown Shot. Leader not going to be able to chase. No summoner spells expended. This will give Gen X a little bit of time in the mid lane. Yeah, this is a really smart read here from Kire. Knowing that Selfmade is almost always going to start on the red buff side of the map when you're on Evelyn, because you need to hit those multi-target camps, they can just permanently zone away Crown Shot and Dreams from this tower. Evelyn is completely useless early on in these fights, so Crown Shot now going under. Oh, a lot of damage onto Dreams. Crown Shot already ignited thanks to Heva. Teleport's being channeled. Kirei dashes forward, but the flail will not find a target. Teleport completes on Gen X. He flashes forward onto Heva. I really thought Heva was going down. Heva's got... Uh, he's already blown his flash, rather. Now Neon continues to chase. Yeah, Neon getting the bounces. That's going to be first blood over to Heva. And he gets the blast to escape. Not bad at all. That Dark Wind doing so much work. Kirei's going to be here to back up a Gen X. Starts to swing those flails of the north. Going to dash over the wall with the Arctic Assault. And now a teleport down to the bottom lane. I think that's Crown Shot returning to lane. This is such a great start here for this Misfit squad. I mean, you look at the CS in both mid lane and bottom lane currently. Neon smashing Crown Shot. Gen X was also just denied underneath the tower, not to mention the first blood going over to Kiva, who has now been able to go back to base and pick up that support item. The snowball has started early, and Misfits should not be looking to stop anytime soon. Oh man, such a great start. It's, li it's literally what the draft called for. It happened earlier than I was anticipating, and I talked me through the the play-by-play, the play. did you like how this dive was played? Yeah, I, I liked it a lot here, uh, starting here with Misfits. You know, you land the fear and the silence to make it so Crown Shot can't really do anything in this fight back. Then they all lose tower aggro until Kire goes back underneath the tower. And uh, looks like a little bit of damage came down on towards Gen X. But this flash to respond from Heva was very, very nicely done. And then Neon, knowing how strong he is and that Gen X was focused on Heva, comes in towards this backside of the fight. Heva even is not even worried about turning around to throw some spells back into the mix of things. This is very beautiful from Misfits. Really nicely done. Kirei backing him up the entire time. It's already a 700 gold advantage. The kill was secured by Heva. He's already thrown out that Terrify. Dark Wind, some very lucky bounces as well as the Drain. And after five minutes, I just want to remind you, SK Gaming are on that eight game losing streak. They are already behind in this matchup. As far as losing streaks are considered, 13 and 14 are the longest that we've seen. Now, Selfmade will be showing his face, but he takes so much damage from Neon just walking into lane. Yeah, that's the difficulty here. On Evelyn, before you hit level 6, you don't have the invisibility to try and close the gap. So because Neon and Heva are so strong, it lets them play so far forward, even though Kyrie is on the wrong side of the map. This is the problem with taking a champion like the Evelyn, because usually, you know, against a Jarvan or something, maybe Neon and Heva, they have to give a lot more respect over to the enemy jungle when their own is not there to defend them. Instead, Kire, who has yet to go back to base, has just been trying to power farm up to his own level 6. Okay, so 35 CS getting close to that Glacial Prison. Let's take a look at the gold difference in just a moment. But as it stands, 1,000 gold accrued already for this Misfit squad.
very, very proactive in your face play. And if you're on the side of SK Gaming, and specifically if you're Crown Shot and Dreams, now you start to get a tad nervous because you are no flash on the Ezreal. There's been a gank at four minutes. Um, some sort of support from Selfmade didn't offer anything. And obviously Misfits will keep doing this, especially now that Cannon Barrage is available as well. Yep, Cannon Barrage is up, Leader's level 6, and Kyrie is going to be clearing top to bot at the moment. So when he does take over to level 6, that's when he's going to be on the bottom side of the map, which gives him that big window to try and find a gank on the flashless crown chat, or even Gen X. Okay, now we see Gen X going forward into Leader. Obviously the priority for our discussion was based around bot due to the draft. Leader will step outside the chains, but what do, make, what do you make of this Aatrox versus Zed? matchup as we do have a momentary response. I think Zed is very comfortable in this matchup, largely because he just outranges Gen X. So when you go for any sort of trade in this mid lane as the Zed, you have the Shadows and the Q to try and poke. It's also a much faster ability, so Gen X can't really dodge away from it all too easily, and it makes these trades very, very favorable for Leader. Wow, there's no flash for Gen X, but he's able to sidestep. Death Mark comes down. Leader's gonna jump back to his Shadow. Selfmade's got support from Uni. Leader goes down! Dreams is able to secure it. Now Kira, he flashes defensively. Here comes Heva. The Dark Wind will do a lot of work if the bouncers can play out, and he'll Hex Flash to safety. Yeah, really nice read there from Selfmade and Dreams. The call to keep both of them around that middle lane to help Gen X push out the wave. They said Kire could be hitting level 6 very soon, could be looking for a gank. And now this gives SK so much time because two key ultimates, three key ultimates, are now down for the side of Misfits. That bot lane play that we were expecting is not going to come up before Crown Shot gets his flash back. Very, very delayed. Crown Shot is still down 15 CS. Uh, Wave is busy moving towards him, of course. Thanks to all that pressure that Misfits has already pushed into this bottom lane. And this obviously starts with Lida and Kira going for a kill on Gen X, but the prison didn't land. Yeah, it's just a really good read here. One more time from Leader, uh, self-made rather, to flash forward and get that charm down on towards Leader. Dream's the one ultimately that picks up that kill, and they can't chase on towards Kire, but it buys the, you know, the push out there for Gen X in the mid lane, gets that kill, and puts them back into this one. All right, so evens out the gold, evens out the kills, and SK, at least they didn't get tilted by the bottom lane play. I wondered if that could have been, or like, already GG, right? Yeah, it was not fun if you're crown shot there and you're level three getting zoned away from your own tower. You actually, when you talk to a lot of pro players and, and even, like, coaches and analysts as well, you see those those sorts of plays happen and you literally hear the guys going, GG, go next. You know, it's, it's over, it's over. But SK, they cannot afford to stop this Neon. He's going to dash forward. That's so much damage. Terrify will send Crown Shot waiting. Remember, no ultimate for Kirei. No ultimate for Dandan. Dan, but it does not matter. Selfmade was around, but the Dark Wind bounce flying between SK's members. Gen X makes it into lane, but here comes Leader. Leader's got the death mark available. That's one down already. Kirei's running for his life. Needs to find something. Will find a stun. Death mark comes out, throws out the cloak. And he's Gen X. Kirei finally goes down. But now Dreams is running for his life. The Shuriken send him packing. And it's missed. To win the fight. It's a disaster in the bottom lane for SK. They tried to read the same play, but Neon and Hiva are so incredibly strong at the moment. They plant their feet in the ground and turn it straight back around on SK. You can see the power of that fear. Terrify removed Crown Shot from this fight. Yeah, and also Self made no ultimate coming into this fight, so he had no way to escape from this one. Kire also was not spotted running down through the river. If he had been, Self made would have called off this play, but instead, it's two very quick kills from Misfits, and then they're them just trying to buy time until they can get these two extra kills on top. Now, admittedly, I'm a little scared of an Aatrox plus Yumi combo. This, this could be good if SK can stem the bleeding, slow it down, We'll ignore the Glacial Prison going tad wide there from Kirei, because at the end of the day, Misfits are five to three up. Heva is with some support here from Kirei. Gen X sniffs it and instantly backs away. Yep, itemization coming through very nicely now for Misfits as well. The Ghost Ghostblade for Leader in the mid lane, Essence Reaver for Neon as well. You just consider the power that yeah. these two ADCs are bringing down to this bottom lane. It's not even close. But now, ended. they already had an advantage just from draft, right? Just, just yep. champion v. champion alone. The early itemization is going to make this technically even easier or even more possible for Misfits to pull off the plays. So let's look forward a couple minutes and see kirei has got support from Heva. How do you want to see Misfits push this lead further? Well, I want to see what they're doing right now. They need to walk into the enemy jungle and clear it out, clear this pathway down towards the bottom lane because they still have three more minutes to try and play for turret plates. They're not spotting out one ward over towards their right at the moment. But SK also need to be able to see these plays in advance. They need to be able to respond towards these moves. Whenever Misfits are trying to build up a large wave in the bottom lane, that's when SK should sense something's going wrong. Yeah, and you can see the Gangplank ultimate is available. 
Lita and Kire also were shifting the way down bottom. It feels like every time I look at the minimap, Misfits are just hosting a party in Crown Shot and Dream's Lane. Right, but that's sort of what's expected, right? Looking at these compositions, we said Misfits are the ones that need to be yeah. playing on the offensive. SK are very defensive in their early game in how they need to approach this type of map. So you see Kire going over to objectives consistently. Neon now rotating out of that bottom lane as well to try and secure the Herald before the plates go down. All right, we want to get that bonus gold. I really like Heaver's positioning as well. He's got availability on the cross at uh, Crow Storm. His hex flashes up as well. So if anybody comes to contest, Heaver's got a pretty safe channel to to jump into the fight. And actually, SK Gaming they're going to contest. Here comes Jonas. There's the Crow Storm. SK Gaming get the last hit. They've made the Rift Herald available. Now Jonas is going to get cold where he stands. Crown Shot's running for his life, but Heaver's low. Sakurai steps forward. He manages to pick up one into Heaver. That's going to be some trouble for Kira. He's looking. He's got no flash available. Realm Warp starts to be channeled. Kira's taking out as well. SK Gaming with the fight. Really nice play there from Crown Shot in particular, throwing out the True Shot Barrage that clips three members and then TPs into the fight. So he called his shot, comes on in there, and once Misfits get scattered, that's where SK's composition can come online and hunt you down. Unbelievable. I really did not think SK were going to be able to pull that off. Very, very bold move. Um, and it comes out advantageous. I think it was one for two kills. And they stole the Herald. And they stole the Herald as well. Um, I actually believe we will have a replay available just momentarily of that last fight. And I'd love to take a closer look at it because it felt so safe. It felt like a really good setup from Misfits. Um, you know, do you like how Misfits had set it up? I mean, I like the aggressiveness of this type of call to come over to the Herald, but the problem is how they get split here, because initially they wanted to make the call to turn with Heva, but because Leader got tr chumped out by the full DPS True Shot Barrage, and Neon is trying to escape from the back of the pit, they couldn't actually draw the line and turn and fight. On top of that, Dan Dan is also late to the party because he's always being pushed in in the top lane. So I think what Misfits might have looked to do first in this type of situation was use the Sejuani to pressure the top lane wave, get the push going for Dan Dan, and then bring him down if they wanted to pull the trigger on it. Okay. I can confirm that the uh, pause is related to a player comms issue. So while our technicians are busy investigating that, we'll just uh, set the scene. It's still a thousand gold advantage to Misfits. It's six kills to five. The first move, the first punch, has always been Misfits. They've, they've set it up. But they've definitely been punched back, and there's been, re you know, uh, responses from SK Gaming. Yeah, and now is SK's first chance in this game, it feels like, to make the move themselves, right? They've all of a sudden got this Rift Herald that's on Crown Shot as well. So they're just going for this full commit into the lane swap. They're summoning the Herald up on the top side of the map, and because Neon and Heva were taken down or put very low, they're not going to be here in time to get this tower. Two plates had already fallen, two Sakurai's pushing the top lane as well, so SK should be able to pick up this tower. And this is really important for Crown Shot. If you look at his uh, CS, he's down nearly 20. 0, 2, and 2. The entirety of Misfit's gold lead was sitting on Neon. He was a thousand gold up before the plates in the tower fell. And now it is 500 gold. It's a lot more manageable, a lot more reasonable. And Crown Shot is getting closer to completing his first big ticket item as he's going to start channeling that recall. So now SK Gaming are in the lead. They've got a very, very minor advantage. And we've got ourselves set up actually for a pretty even, pretty exciting game. Um, for a squad like SK who really are, are falling behind the competition in Europe, they are now putting up a, a, a fight against Misfits and showing that Misfits really going to have to work if they want this win. Yeah, and, and you always have to consider the later we get to this game how scary Selfmates Evelyn is going to be. Right now, it's not the most terrifying thing in existence, but once we get, you know, 25, 30 minutes into this game, if Selfmate can avoid the control ward lines of a squad like Misfits, he has a lot of viable targets to try and solo out. Well, let's see if we can find them, of course. Um, Right now, SK haven't set up any of the plays themselves. And it's Heva, it's Misfits that's pushing forward. I saw a number of Misfits members stepping forward. The last chapter has been thrown. That's a flash forward from Selfmade. Heva's blown up before he can do anything. But the response is an insta-kill onto Selfmade. Thus far, one for one, jungle for support. But here comes Genax. Neon cannot even get over the wall. And Genax at two, two, and three is already scary. Yeah, he is with the Yumi on top of him as well. SK are able to fire back. And it's two fights in a row where their side lanes have had priority. They've been the first ones to rotate into these fights, and that's been the biggest key in their ability to win out. And of course, just as uh, that fight was starting, Ender, you pointed out to me the Mikhail's Crucible. So important against the Sejuani CC, against the Fiddle CC. 
you can only target a single member. Now, of course, if that's going to be Gen X, who seems to be doing very well, or unlocking Crown Shot to put some distance and, and, and uh, keep spamming out those spells, that will be a crucial ability to follow. Yeah, it's it's the item they needed right now, because right now the, the Yumi and the Ezreal are still weak relative to their opponents. They're not, SK shouldn't be trying to look to play through this duo, but if they can get the Mikhail's Crucible and avoid a lot of the plays the Misfits are trying to make against them, and they have time to get two, two and a half items on this Ezreal, that's when he's gonna be a lot more formidable in these mid-game fights. I'm keeping our eyes on how SK play them. I really like that response. I was very impressed with the aggressive step forward by SK in their own jungle. They're defending the territory and they're not conceding the vision wall. Yeah, and here's the thing from SK. They're always going to have the Yumi inside of this Evelyn. That invisibility, double invis when you have that cat inside you as well. But you can't really make the offensive plays because, as you said, it is Misfits with control over the map. Currently, Dan Dan has his ultimate and the teleport available. So they're always going to be trying to set up plays around Tiva. Here he goes on Crash Shot. There we go. Crow Storm set up. And before before Crown Shot can do anything, that was just really, really nicely done. Pro Storm over the wall. Prowling Projectile will find lead. A very good use of vision by our observers. Deathmark comes down. self made in trouble, but the pop will not be enough to kill him. Maybe just pops the shield. Kirei's gonna have his Glacial Prison available. It's just become up, but now self made is running away with dreams. Oh no, Heva goes over the wall the wrong direction, and self made's going to be able to get out right there. They're putting down a lot of wards to try and spot him out, but he's gonna be scot free. I really like the observers are toggling between, you know, sort of God Vision, which is what the Shoutcasters use, as well as Misfits Vision. So you can see self made in dreams, that invisibility and the power and the value that it's offering as this. Uh, Cat assassin are roaming around the map. God vision? Is that, is that really what you think of yourself, Trevor? It's shoutcaster vision. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's an old cheat code, actually. So are we going to see this from leader's viewpoint? Uh, we'll find out. Yeah, so the Q comes out of nowhere. He's like, what's going on? Then you see self-made using the ultimate backwards, trying to extend the range of the Yumi ult for that CC. The exhaust also going down to try and reduce a lot of the damage coming through from Zed right there. And then... If only he had been a little bit more patient, but instead, Selfmade just sneaks on out. We'll have to ask the question if Misfits are the most unlucky team in the LSC, at least this weekend. Seems to be. Now, that's not luck. That was a decision. You choose. Do I go left? Do you choose? Do I go right? But it's more fun if I get to paint it in a <laughs> hyperbolic statement. But this game is, uh, uh, you know, swung. The first 10 minutes felt felt Misfits, you know, felt like they, they had a game plan, felt like they were going to be able to just build this gigantic lead, but it's actually very, very close. We're nearly 20 minutes in, and Selfmade's early game decision-making seems to have worked out. He's 2-2-5. Two, two, and five. He's opposite number Kirei, 2-2-4. Two, two, and four. And now we can see this Evelyn-Yumi combination. It is very, very scary. If Dan Dan ever wants to play in a side lane, he needs epic vision to do it safely. Yeah, it's going to be really, really hard for him. And you think about how these two teams want to play through this game. For Misfits, it's all about control. It's about finding these fights so they can set up a flank with Heva's fiddlesticks. It's where they can group up and find these plays. Whereas SK, they are more than happy for very scrappy games of League of Legends, where you can try to pick people out around the map with the Yumi and the, uh, the Evelyn as well. Yeah. And there's a lot at stake here for SK. Um, I can see up in the top lane, Sakurai going to be in a little bit of pressure. Kiri's got the ultimate available, dashes forward. Be able to get some damage done. Cannon Barrage is being held for now. Glacial Prison comes out. The Powder Kicks will explode. Not going to find the target though, finally. Cannon Barrage, not going to be enough. Sakura is able to escape thanks to the Realm Warp. That was very nicely done. Yeah, super close right there, but two flashes lost on the side of Misfits. They also give up so much pressure around this bottom lane too. So SK are going to be able to secure themselves the tower and continue to push further and further ahead. Yeah, they are. And Two towers to zero, no real threat just yet. Uh, Danda may be able to do something in the top lane. There's an another minion wave making its way in, but he's not committing, he's not sticking around. I don't know when last Misfits saw Selfmade's Evelyn. He's been roaming around a lot, and now Heva could be in trouble. Yeah, he's going to channel the Hex Flash, it looks like, to sneak on over the wall right there. And then go right back around. Okay, there's the turn. Selfmade is going to be able to escape for now. Uses the ultimate to do so. Heva's in trouble. Not going to be able to stay alive. Gen X goes golden thanks to the use of that stopwatch. And SK Gaming have got a five-man stack miss. Misfits keep trying to force fights where they don't have the numbers advantage. And that time, they were trying to jump on towards Selfmade. Yeah, they didn't have the ultimates either. So relying very heavily on Heba CC and Crowstorm, and it did not work out. Now SK Gaming leading kills, 1,500 gold up. 
and SK are pushing into Misfits jungle. Yeah, and Misfits are starting to have a new problem as well because their damage profile is not very diverse. You look at, you know, Gangplank, Zed, Lucian, it's a whole lot of physical damage. Heva's the only one really bringing some magic. And there's a Righteous Glory being built on Sakurai. There's armor items starting to come through now. We can see this one more time. They see Selfmade, but I don't know, this seems way too ambitious here, knowing four members of SK are in the area, and both Dan Dan and Lieber can't respond. Uh, no cannon barrage, no glacial prison. It was a bold call and it simply didn't work out. You can see the damage dealt thus far. Um, sort of what you would expect. Obviously, Sakurai's been fairly influential when he's been involved. But the one thing that I definitely want to just remind everybody of is each of these teams after this game only has four games remaining. And we've touched a lot on how SK Gaming are struggling. They're the number 10 team. They want to win out. And if you look at the rest of the teams they're playing in Vitality, Excel, and Origin, those are the three teams that are in real sort of direct challenge to them. Um, as it stands, there are three wins for SK. Origin only have six. So it's very, very close. And you can see the standings on the left of your screen. Nothing is locked yet, as far as the bottom of the tables, and not making it to play. Yeah, and SK need to win all of these games. They are, they do have a fighting chance. You no, know, not playing against the two top teams in the league is one of the better schedules you can get going into your last five games of, or last four games, rather, of regular season play. So it starts here with this match against Misfits, and they're in a good position already. Yeah, they are. The Heba's five levels down from Gen X. Kirei is two, and despite getting the Terrify, Gen X just continues to step forward. He had support from Selfmade, he had support from Dreams, and Misfits have lost complete control. Let's turn our perspective to SK, and, and uh, how does SK now press this advantage and use this Probably Evelyn, really, to unlock even more tools. I think SK have two things on their mind, and the first is going to be the skate to the bot lane. All right, it will. This time around, the barrels land. No hesitation on the cannon barrage. Dan Dan, with the help of Heva, they pick up a kill. Yep, going to go down real easy there towards Heva. Misfits doing a good job of punishing the side lane, but realistically, SK just need to try and thwart the engage attempts of Misfits that are going to keep coming their way, and then try to set up picks with this Evelyn around side lanes and around your points of pressure on the map. I really thought Heva was going to get blown up with the Terrify did by some time. Glacial Prison comes up. Gen X is caught up but instantly relieved thanks to that Mikhail's Crucible which he talked about earlier. And itemization wise, Misfits, they are starting to build up. They've got two items across most of their lanes. They will secure their very first tower but Dan Dan will get punished here as self made and Gen X will be chasing him down. This looks to be a fairly easy kill. Yes, they do. Teleport expanded, kill secured. This is what we needed to see out of self made, right? Go into these side lanes, find Dan Dan when he is overextending. The same can be said of leader as well. It sets up for nice kills. Let's talk about the itemization because I've got a Righteous Glory yep. uh, on the side of Sakura's Rise. Do you like this? I like it a lot, especially in this type of a game where the armor is going to be very, very valuable up against this heavy AD comp from Misfits. And also, we talk about chasing down a Gangplank through the lane. If you're playing the Rise, you have your W. He can instantly clear that CC, but you have the movement speed as well as the extra slow from that Righteous Glory, it all of a sudden makes it almost impossible for Dan Dan to try and escape you, especially if you, if you have an Evelyn in the area as well. Yeah, very, very useful. And of course, Evelyn has got that Lich Bane completed, sorted out the jungle item through Nick Echoes. GA secured on the side of Gen X along with the Black Cleaver. And really, my expectations for both of these solo layers after watching EU Masters, after being reminded of how EU Masters played out, I'm very impressed to see what SK are doing. They haven't buckled under the pressure. They didn't freeze or lock up after falling behind early. And Sakura in particular, he's already up around 20 CS on this rise. He's had, I feel, more impactful plays for his team than Dan Dan thus far. Now Dan Dan's oh, going to be on target. self -made's coming in from behind. The minion wave has been cleared. Cannon Barrage comes out. And despite, whoa, some time, the Cannon Barrage and the help of the tower was able to pick up the kill. Cost a curse initiated. Gen X is under some threat. Leader's jumping in with the death mark. Heaver's going to be trying to play some sort of zone defense, and Neon will now get some support. Heaver's channeling his ultimate. What's crowd shot? He's going to find it for now. The chapter is thrown out, but crowd shot stays alive. Gets out of range of the culling, and Misfits will wait for him anyway. But there's not enough pressure for Tower. Yeah, Misfits are really trying to fish for a kill there onto crowd shot. If they can get that, they immediately turn back towards the Baron with self made going down for that one for one in the bottom lane. But because that kill does not come through, they have to settle for a turn instead. Twenty. 21 kills in 24 minutes. These are teams that are sitting at the bottom of the standings here in Europe. And if I am going to be frank and if a little bit uh, negative, the level of play you're seeing here, even if SK or Misfits make it into playoffs over the next few weeks, this is scrappy.
This is problematic, and these are things that you cannot afford to be doing in week seven of summer. Definitely. I mean, I feel like a lot of our lower tier teams at the moment are struggling from these similar kinds of issues, especially come mid game. We have a lot of these fights that tend to get flip flop either way here. And right now it's SK with control, and they're trying to move on Neon. That was a very bold move from Neon. Forced to use the flash. Will hold his life for now, but all of a sudden there's now pressure on the bot lane. Dan Dan gonna get the support of Kiva once more. Flash away from Sakre. Is he gonna be able to finish the run? Whoop! And gets to safety. Yep, easy escape there from Sakre. That's the biggest difference between these two split pushers. Rise get it for free. Whoa! Oh, that was a lot of damage. The ultimate from Eve keeping self made alive. Barely, barely, barely living with just one more auto attack left in the tank. Now SK should pick up this mid lane tower, but the rest of Misfits are setting up another fight. Okay, Kiray's got his ultimate available. The tower will fall. Crown Shot flashes over, but the Death Mark chases him. Now Gen X is the target. Another Glacial Prison goes wide. Terrified by some time as the camera comes out, Eva goes golden, here comes Dan Dan, hits a parlay onto Sakre, and that's a kill, Janet takes out Heva, he's on a killing spree, level 15, and Misfits don't chase for more. Yeah, they can't chase on towards that Evelyn going in this, they also lost their bottom lane, so Baron is not going to be a possibility unless they want to move on over towards this. They pinged Baron, now maybe this is just a contest vision? because that would be a very bold call. Yeah, I think they'd actually be out of their mind if they started that one up. They didn't really have any control wards, any sweepers to try and make sure there wasn't vision inside of the pit. Not to mention, they're missing their AD carry as well. But we see this fight one more time because it, it starts off with Neon being forced to use his flash and, uh, and try to jump out over the wall. Actually, no, this is the play where Selfmade just instantly burst him after he had lost that flash. But then it's still Misfits that set up this flank, even spotted out on a ward here from Kire. But Selfmade and, and his support had already bailed out of this fight, so it's four members of Misfits. They can instantly pick up the kill on towards the AD carry, and then all of a sudden turn what should have been a 4v5 into a 4v4. The damage that Neon uh, is putting out, though, is quite impressive. He's got the Infinity Edge, Essence Reaver, Zeal, as well as an Executioner's Calling. And I mean, he almost sort of soloed out self and self had some support. So this is actually a good sign for Misfits. We're nearly 30 minutes in. We're still in a very, very even game. So now we have to start talking scaling. Now we have to start talking late game. Three, four items. Which composition do you like more? I think I like SK's comp uh, a whole lot more here, primarily for the reason that I don't think that Crown Shot should be dying in this initial engage from Misfits. And if they can't solo him and Sakurai out, then the initial the, or the the eventual turn in these fights is going to be very, very favorable for him. The consistent DPS and the sort of resets you can make with the likes of an Evelyn inside of these team fights is going to be very, very good. Well, Arctic Assault over the wall. Kirei will throw out the prism and not find a target. Here comes Leader. If Leader can find Crown Shot, it can help. Jen Max goes so far forward, he's almost got Neon and takes him down. Now to fight to multiple fronts. Lina keeps three people busy before he is killed. Now Kire goes golden for some time, but Genax is destroying Misfits, avenging EU Masters and looking to end the SK loss streak. In his first week in the LEC, he tears Misfits apart right there, tag teaming with Dreams 2v4 in the back lines of that team fight. It just didn't even look close. No, it absolutely does not. This Aatrox Yumi combination has been so influential. Yesterday, Gen X's Aatrox went 2, 3, and 9. Kony's 4, 2, and 6. And this fight, obviously, I was looking at Leader. If Leader could have got one of these carries on the back, maybe it could have gone different. Yeah, but let's see what Gen X does in this fight here because he starts off just running on in, calls for Dreams to enter him. And then gets the root down for the three or the third hit Q on towards Neon. The exhaust also secured. Makes it very easy for that. And on the back line, leader just was not able to do it. No, not at all. This replay brought to you by Alienware. Allows SK Gaming to pick up the Baron. They've got themselves nearly a 4,000 gold lead if memory serves. And I mean Heber was trying to channel the um, Crow Storm. I wonder if that was gonna be defensive. I don't know what angle he was looking for. I think it was. Everyone's dead. Yeah. I'm gonna press my buttons. Yeah. Definitely not worth self-made with the help of dreams. Was looking towards Kire, and the next dragon is gonna be another Cloud Drake. No, huge priority on it though. Oh, Neon trying to escape here. Will be able to dodge over the wall, but right now the only play Misfits have is to try and set up the pick in the side lane on towards Sakura. Here it is. Okay, three members this time. The last time two wasn't able to do it. Hourglass is you. Teleport's being channeled. Here comes Crown Shot. I think he's bringing Dreams. No, it's self made bringing him. Sakri's already dead. Glacial Prison goes out. That's going to be decent. Kire is going to be running for his life. Chasing down Genex. He's staying alive. A thousand eight. Storm. Coach Storm is going to do a lot. There we go. Neon going down against Selfmade. He turned around for a triple kill. That is fantastic damage from Selfmade.
self-made, they re-engage and obliterate Misfit. Self-made with a big damage in that fight. Gonna turn it straight around. Leader nowhere to be found with the Baron buff. Self, uh, SK are gonna be trying to push into the base. I did not even see how the burst damage came out. Self-made did so much work as he and Dreams rocked up. So Leader's pushing mid. Baron empowered minions will take the inner bottom turret. Dan Dan's running back to base to spend a little bit more gold before he joins the fray. Self-made one, and he has a level lead over leader at the moment, level 16 on that Evelyn. Just gonna chase him out while the rest of SK push for this tower. Respawns are coming through, but not in time. No, those barrels did simply not enough. Eva will be standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Dan Dan and SK on the cusp of ending the losing streak. On the cusp of bringing Misfits down to the tied ninth place standings at 4 and 10. And it's been after a comeback thanks to some phenomenal plays from Southmade, Sakurai, and fairly Gen X. Yeah, so the only play Misfits think they can win here is this fight on the silence. So it's Hex Flash over from Hiva, and they're trying to layer their CC one after another, but the Zonias come in, which means there's a double TP arriving. The Evelyn comes in from this back as well. And just look at the damage Selfmade is able to do on this turn because he stays invisible. He doesn't want to give them the knowledge that he is in this team fight until the ultimates and all the spells are used. Then he instantly solos out Neon and gets this massive ulti to and the electric proc for the yeah. triple kill. Phenomenal, phenomenal play. And that's what allows SK Gaming to get ahead. I mean, 20 kills now, five towers to four, 6k gold. You know what that means too, is that Selfmade actually killed Neon without using three attacks. He didn't proc electrocute on the Lucian. <laughs> he killed him so quickly. Unbelievable. But I mean, we've seen that, like the burst damage on these squishy targets. It's happened time and time again. And this is all, by the way, during the course of Baron. So Baron power play at two and a half thousand. Misfits aren't done yet. Uh, they're looking for a fight. Here we go. They find the flank. Get the CC on top. Right? All right. There comes the cannon barrage. The hourglass is buying so much time. Selfmade running for his life. Lost Grace points. Some additional. Gen X is now low. GA is still up. Kirei down to a thousand. Look at the minimap. Crown shot is coming up from the south. GA has popped, but that's it. Here comes Crown shot. Dan Dan goes forward almost to die. Now Misfits running for their lives. He's rooted. He's locked down. He's overloaded. And Sakura gets the kill. The fear from Terrified. They're gonna keep on going forward. The Realm Orb in towards the enemy base gets canceled out there. I think a silence. Yeah, it looked to be the case. I think the Dark Wind bounce or something similar. Not quite sure. Nevertheless, SK take the sixth tower, and it has been a team fight train for SK. And they've also got super minions down in this bottom lane. This might be the final push of the game for SK. Five members strong in the base, and Misfits only have three to defend. That's so scary. 15 seconds for Eva, 25 for Dan. Now the Nexus turret is starting to go low. self made will be killing off the minions. The first Nexus turret is moments away from falling. And Crown is throwing Mystic Shot after Mystic Shot out. Eva's gonna be spawning in just five seconds. SK going for the fight, though. Kiri goes low. He does indeed. Lita goes forward to the death mod, jumps back to the Living Shadow. He's already taken up by Crown Shot. Now, despite Heaver being alive, the tower is falling. The second goes thereafter. Now Neon runs for his life. The QS has to buy some time. The Nexus is focused. SK Gaming end the losing streak. <laughs> Better late than never. But this is a scary sign for SK and Misfits at four wins and 10 losses. They now need more than ever Origin, Vitality, XL, Rogue to lose games if either of these teams want to make playoffs. Yeah, they have to continue to win out. Even then, their destiny may not be in their own hands. But for SK Gaming to finally break the losing streak, and off the back of Selfmade's Evelyn, no less, this has to be a major boost in confidence for them. We've been waiting so long to see the Selfmade of Spring split, and he still has work to do. But on the Evelyn, he had a massive impact in this game. Out of the 14 games that SK played on stage, Selfmade has played 10 unique champions. No champion has been played more than twice. This was his debut, Evelyn, in summer. And while it was invisible in the early game, it more than made up for it in the late game. Yeah, it seemed like this game was not going SK's way for a very long time, right? Early attention down towards that bottom lane, but with some smart counter moves from Selfmade, especially around the middle lane to try and stop that snowball from continuing. That's really what put the brakes on for Misfits and allowed SK to get back in. Now, Misfits, two wins, four losses in the three weeks with this roster on stage. They got 0-2 this weekend, yesterday obliterated by OG. Today, 
a scrappy game, but one that, despite a strong start, they didn't seem to build up a rhythm. And I don't, I don't blame them because they're not playing their style, right? They can't yeah. get into that rhythm because it's Dan Dan on a top lane Karma and then on a top lane Gangplank. It was no longer about setting up for a 1-3-1 one, one or anything along these lines. It was a very different look for Misfits, and they took their eye off the prize, which was yeah. continued ganks around that bottom lane. And it's interesting for me because as a team, you have to command the ability to explore and diversify your play. But with so much at stake and the potential of making playoffs, maybe now's not the time. Look, it's a brand new team. This is what, their second, third week here on the LEC stage. They should not be trying yeah. to diversify their style. They need to do what go that works for them so they can actually get the wins, try and push them into playoffs. All right, so I can see the interviews being set up while it is. Let's take another quick look at Selfmade's Evelyn. We did talk so much about it. And, you know, really after the early game, after all the gang's bottom lane, Plays like this with the Yumi, just so powerful to deal with. Yeah, it was always about catching Misfits out in rotation to side lanes, especially because, you know, Leader was trying to go into sides very, very often. But then also, you know, Dandan pushing down into this bottom lane. This is exactly where a champion like the Evelyn can shine. And because, you know, around, you know, the 10, 15 minute mark, SK were able to stop the bleeding early on. It enabled Self Made to try and make these kinds of plays. Yeah, really, really nicely done. The thing that, again, I had a little bit of hope for Misfits when I saw the damage Neon was putting out, but he was never in a position with the rest of the team, really, in the opportune fights. Unfortunately, we didn't get flanks from Leader Zed. We didn't really see setups from Kirei Sejuani to it, make it work. It was because Misfits, their side laners, seemed like they were always late to the team fights. This was one of the only ones where they had a numbers advantage at the start. Even then, it only ends up being an even trade, I believe, because they'd lost their AD carry at the start of it. Yeah. So they had a composition that needed to force fights, and they just didn't actually do them. Now, I do want to see this from Selfmade, because I think it's an EQ. And then that's the only two attacks that went down onto the Lucian, which means the Electrocute comes through on the double uh, ultimate there from Selfmade. Unbelievable. Selfmade managed to pick up the kill without actually dealing any traditional damage, shall we say, to the enemy champion. So we talked a lot about standings. You're going to be hearing a whole lot more of it. We caught a quick glimpse there of uh, uh, the standings right now as SK and Misfits finish out the week. Quick Kia Player of the Game nominations at LOL Esports on Twitter is either Selfmade, Gen X, or Dreams. This is actually a difficult one, but I'm leaning towards Gen X. I think his Aatrox was fantastic, and the threat that he pulled is what, in my mind, allowed SK to go ahead. Yeah, I thought a lot of those early fights were because of his influence. Selfmade sort of took the spotlight later on in the game, but the mid-game that was so important for them was Gen X. It was indeed. And fortunately for us, Gen X is standing by with Law. Dude, you've got my pog vote. <laughs> thank you, guys, and thank you, Gen X, for joining me. Do you think you should get player of the game here? Mm, I mean... I think I deserve it the same amount that SafeMate deserves it for this game. Uh -huh. Well, we'll see later about the fans' vote. Now, you came in this week in a very difficult situation. SK was in a big losing streak. So what, what can you tell me about the impact you had on the team with this win? Mm, I think to the team, like we were on a six-game losing streak, now a seven-game losing streak that we broke today. I think I am bringing new motivation and like a more aggressive play side to the team. So I think I'm a good uh, addition. Did it help that you were playing against Misfits Premier? I mean, the team you used to know in the EU Masters. I mean, they play like the same like every game. I feel like they always play mid into bot, and we could see it in the early game. They did it, so we were prepared for it. We didn't do it that good this game. Like we didn't counter that good, but it was fine. But it worked out for you guys. Now I was talking to Cronchat yesterday, and he mentioned that the biggest issue with SK right now is confidence. So what do you make of confidence after playing with the team? Mm, I mean. Confidence is for sure still an issue, like sometimes we have like the team fight comp and we're even in the game and we're still scared to go in. But I think like from the two weeks of scrims that I've joined in, like it got better every game. Now, what do you think about your first steps in the LEC? Uh, sorry again? What do you think about your first steps in the LEC? I mean, I'm like not too unhappy with my performance. I thought it would maybe be a little bit worse, but... Um, I think I'm doing fine. Well, it was great having you. Thank you so much for your insights. You. We're going to take a break and coming back, it's going to be XL versus Vitality. Don't go anywhere, guys. But here comes Leader. Leader's got the death mark available. That's one down already. Kirei's running for his life. Needs to find something. We'll find a stun. Death mark comes out, throws out the cloak. And he's got it. Kirei finally goes down. But now Dreams is running for his life. The Shuriken send him packing. Now Gen X is going to get cold where he stands. Crown Shot's running for his life, but Heaver's low. Sakurai steps forward. He manages to pick up one into Heaver. That's going to be some trouble for Kirei. He's looking. He's got no flash available. Round one starts to be channeled. Kirei's taking out as well. SK Gaming win the fight. Now to fight a multiple. Front. Leader keeps three people busy before he is killed. Now Kirei goes golden for some time, but Genex is doing.
destroying misfits, avenging EU masters, and looking to end the SK loss streak. Chasing down Jerez, he's staying alive. A thousand eight. Storm. Coach Storm is going to do a lot. There we go. Neon going down against something. They turn around for a triple kill. Now Neon runs for his life. The QS has to buy some time. The Nexus is focused. SK Gaming end the losing streak. Oh! <laughs>